that it's the opposition who are in front of you, your enemies are behind you, on your own benches. Last night, the government pushed through its same-sex marriage bill, with the support of Labour and in the face of bitter opposition from many on its own side. Here's a flavour of the debate. This bill has a single important and straightforward purpose, to extend marriage to same-sex couples. And I'm delighted that the major political parties on front benches are unanimous in the view that this is an essential objective, and I'm grateful for their unwavering support. It has been reassuring to see the other parties sharing my determination to ensure that nothing derails or delays this very important piece of legislation. If you are a same-sex couple, you have no justice at all. It's not about fairness. There is no justice. You cannot be married. And it seems to me to be grossly unfair to continue to perpetuate an injustice, particularly if, in the spirit of my honourable friend from the front bench, the proposal in this amendment is accepted tonight. This is a free vote. We're in danger of being party to a stitch-up a last-minute stitch-up between front benches. But this is a free vote, not on a conscience issue, but a simple matter here of equality, which all members can support, and indeed have support, I would have said, so far. Uh, whether they are whipped to support the bill or will defy the whip to oppose it. Let us be clear. There are people in this House who are supporting this amendment for precisely the opposite reason. I do not include my honourable friend uh, in that. There are people who are breathing the word equality for the first time. It sticks, frankly, it sticks, frankly, in the craw of many of us to be lectured suddenly now about equality by a whole group of people who have been opposing this bill and opposing equality and opposing every single measure that has come forward to promote equality in the first place, including civil partnerships. But I fear that the playing field is not being levelled. I believe that the pendulum is now swinging so far the other way, and there are plenty in the, uh, in the aggressive homosexual community who see this as but a stepping stone to something even yes. further. Well, that was the debate yesterday. Let's get the latest on this from our political correspondent, Carol Walker. Carol, hugely divisive for the Conservatives, but where are we now with the bill? Well, the debate will continue in the Commons this afternoon, Joe, and there are more amendments down, and there will be a further vote in principle on what's called the third reading, another important milestone in the bill this evening. I think the expectation is that it will get through the Commons uh, with a similar figures to the votes that we've seen in the past, uh, more than 100 Conservative MPs perhaps voting against it, but with the support of Labour and the Liberal Democrats, the government will get through this milestone. It does then go on to the House of Lords, where it could face quite a difficult ride. But clearly, I think the Prime Minister thinks that this is an important issue. He's going to press on with this. But the legacy that it will leave in terms of the difficulties within his own party, I think, is something that's going to be very, very difficult for him to overcome. He sent this email out today. Yes. It's quite something when a Prime Minister has to mm. send an email to his own party member saying, oh, I really wasn't sneering at you. Um, but I think that many MPs and activists will now be looking to him to say, well, if you really do care about our feelings, then you've got to show that in what you say and what you do in the coming months. Well, as you say, um, Carol, it has highlighted the disconnect, real or imagined, between David Cameron and his party, and we'll have yet to see whether the relationship can be fixed. How much does David Cameron, though, have to fear from his own backbenchers, some of whom we've spoken to over the past week, who really feel he hasn't been leading the party on the key issues of Europe and gay marriage? Well, I think what there is is a real sense of frustration that every time that David Cameron does something which is applauded on amongst his own MPs, like the big speech of, on Europe, that's simply not followed up with action. We had, as one MP put it to me, four months of inactivity after that speech, during which time UKIP then made great strides and, of course, did very well in the local elections. I think David Cameron now does face a series of tests, and the first one of them will be the government's handling of that private member's bill on a European referendum. I think MPs will be looking to see if the Conservative part of the government does do all it can to try to make sure that that gets some sort of passage through Parliament. Um, as one senior figure party in the party said to me, 
he's got to start governing as though he's in a coalition with the Conservatives rather than all the time looking at his Lib Dem coalition partners. I think MPs and activists would like to see him standing up to the Lib Dems a bit more all right. and pushing some core Conservative issues. Carol Walker, thank you very much. I mean, Andrew Dennis, David Cameron was chosen, arguably, as Conservative leader because, in a way, he was slightly different to many grassroots Tories. Young, moderniser, a little bit like Tony Blair. So who is it that's out of touch in this argument within the Conservative Party? Is it grassroots Tories or is it David Cameron? I think David Cameron's in touch with middle opinion, which is now strongly in favour of gay marriage. And I'm glad that all three parties united to support it. And uh, Cameron mentioned it going to the House of Lords. I would expect it to have a big majority in the House of Lords, because I think uh, the, the, the mainstream of the House of Lords is now thoroughly progressive on these issues. Do you know the thing that I find really disappointing about what's going to happen in the House of Lords, though, is the position of the Church of England. The bishops in the Church of England, headed by the Archbishop of Canterbury, are opposing gay marriage, and they're even opposing the right of vicars who want to conduct gay marriages to allow their churches to be used for that purpose. I think in not leave aside 20 or 30 years time, I think in two or three years time that will look like a really serious mistake and a very backward looking position on the part of the Church of England. But you think it'll pass nonetheless? Oh, yeah, I think it'll pass with a big majority. I'm right. very confident of that. Right. But I mean, when you talk about the Church of England, you say you're disappointed in the views that have been expressed. Those views chime very strongly with many of not just Conservative voters, in the country who feel very strongly on this issue. I think op opinion is moving, and the polls I, I see show a majority now in favour of gay marriage. And it's a basic issue of equality, and with each passing month, those who are prepared to argue on principle against equality are finding it harder and harder to do so. What was so telling about the debate yesterday?